There are many ways to simulate tech renders or sketch effects. This movie shows how you can achieve the result using the ink and paint material. Usually, ink and paint is used for cartoon effects. As you will see in this movie though, it can also be used for technical renders. The scene shows two futuristic buildings. The current materials applied are based on mentor ray arc and design materials. No maps or bitmaps are used at this time. To create a tech render material, go to the Slate Material Editor and drag an ink and paint material into the viewer. Double-click its node to see its properties. Alternatively, double-click the sample image to get a better view of the material. Ultimately, you are looking for a monochrome image, so start by setting the lighted color to full white. You can also change the paint levels to affect the shaded areas. For the effect you are aiming for with the scene, a value of 3 should be adequate, but feel free to experiment with other values. The percent option lets you adjust the intensity of the shade. Disable this value as you need to replace it with a map to simulate hatching or pencil strokes. Instead of the blue-gray solid color, apply a gradient ramp map to the shade color channel. You'll be adjusting the gradient map parameters momentarily, but first, set the ink width to 0.5. Again, you can experiment with this value, but thin contour lines arguably look better. Double-click the gradient map node to display its parameters. If you wish, double-click its sample image to better view the changes you are about to introduce. Set the W angle value to 45. This will give the hatching a northeast-southwest direction. Double-click the first color flag on the left and set it to full white. Drag a point above the first color flag to about a third of the way to the right, position 33. This makes a copy of the white color and ensures a third of the gradient is solid white. Move the third gray flag to position 66. You can change the color value to make it a lighter or darker gray, or you can choose another color altogether. Try a blue-green color, RGB values 80, 100, 100. At this time, you can test the material by applying it to objects. Another method is to override all scene materials with this newly created one. The advantage of this method is that you can revert back to the original materials if you need to. Go to the Render Dialog Processing tab. Enable the Material Override option. Instance the newly created material into that channel. If you tried rendering the scene now, it turns dark. This is due to the environment settings. Go to the Environment dialog. Set the background color to full white and disable Use Map on the Environment MR Physical Sky Map. Disable Exposure Control completely. Render again. You start to see some results, but they are not convincing yet. One of the problems is with render quality and anti-aliasing. The other is with mapping scale. In order for the gradient map to be consistent throughout the scene, all objects must be mapped the same way. This can be done by selecting all objects and applying a map scaler object space modifier to them. Try rendering again. The hatching looks better. You can adjust the coarseness of the hatching by changing the U-tiling value. A bit of trial and error is involved. A value of 3 works well for this scene. To improve render quality, you need to increase image precision, anti-aliasing. Set it to very high, minimum 4, maximum 64. You can disable all other sliders as the scene does not require reflections, refractions, soft shadows, or even final gather. Notice how some of the missing lines from earlier are now visible with the improved anti-aliasing. However, there are still some artifacts around the corner of the high-rise. These are happening because some of the polygons on the rounded corners happen to have multiple smoothing groups. 
One way to fix this is to disable smoothing groups from the ink properties of the material. However, this is global to the whole scene and will remove ink strokes that you actually want to have. A better solution is to adjust the smoothing groups on the building corners. Restore the smoothing groups option of the ink and paint material. Select the high rise and go to editable poly edge mode. Select the vertical edge on a corner and then click on loop to select the whole vertical loop. Holding control, repeat the procedure until you select all four corners. Again holding control, click the ring spinners once on the top, once on the bottom. This selects three vertical loops for each corner. Holding control, click the polygon icon to convert the selection. Now all polygons representing the rounded corners are selected. In smoothing groups, notice that the selected polygons are part of smoothing groups 1 and 2. Disable both and enable another smoothing group, such as 21 for example. Any number would do as long as it doesn't belong to the other sides of the building. Exit polygon mode, restore the active perspective view and render again. The artifacts around the corners are now gone. Experiment with this technique using your own scenes. Remember to have the mental ray engine enabled and to set the gradient map tiling according to the scene scale. Remember also to adjust smoothing groups where needed.